Well, there's the Bamboo Lab P1P, there's the K1 Creality High Speed Printer. There is this one here, which is, uh, I've heard it's pronounced a couple different ways. I'm going to call it the Cutie. I, I don't know. But the Cutie is uh, a high speed printer, and it is a better price than those other two I just mentioned. So we got to take a good look at it. It did a bench the other day in 17 minutes, which was like, but. The whole overall situation, it's a game changer, and at the same time, I had a lot of questions about this thing when it was coming in, so we're going to try to answer some of those, uh, take a good look at it, because this one is great for beginners, intermediate, and I'm thinking print farming, because it knocks parts out so fast, you know, but let's talk about all that. Oh. Wow, so here it is, the <laughs> X-Smart 3 from Cootie, Cutie, I'm gonna call them Cutie for the rest of their lives, so I don't care how you pronounce it, <laughs> I don't know, it's a Q-I-D-I, -I, you know, it's like whatever. This one here is a, a sort of an entry level into the high speed printing world, and it's fully, it comes fully enclosed. It, it comes like this out of the box, you know, and the reason I, you know, mentioned that it could be a beginner's machine is because there's not much to do. You remove the foam packing and four screws for this plate down the bottom and then walk you through the uh, menu here. It'll, it'll take you through the steps, you know, to putting it, uh, getting it up and running. So, and it has extremely high speed. In fact, I, I printed up some of the specs on this thing and just looked at it. It was like, you know, the print speed up to 500 millimeter a second was one thing, but the uh, core XY structure that they've got here with the uh, carbon fiber uh, rods was kind of impressive with the auto bed leveling was awesome too, but all, all the faster uh, speed times with the acceleration at 20,000 uh, millimeters a second squared was like, what? You know, like, Jesus, this thing's fast. Uh, the flow rate is at 30 millimeters, uh, and again, that's with the three over that, so that's not squared. What is that? Anyway, three over the per second, and the print size is the only thing. That was the only thing that kind of worried me a little bit was the bed size is uh, a 185 by 185 bed size, and the actual print uh, is even less than that. It's 175 by 180 by 170, so you're sort of, you know, it's pretty small bed size, so, but... I check my models and everything that I manufacture right now at least will fit on that bed size. It it will just fit, you know. So it was like, okay, you know, we we can work with this. So at a $399 entry price, this is way cheaper than something like and I'm just gonna pick on the P1P Bamboo Lab. Yeah, it's a nice machine, the P1P, but uh, it's not fully, it doesn't come fully enclosed like this, you know, it, it doesn't have that finished look like this does, but also there's a couple of other things that uh, in the industry to look at, and the first thing, other thing I noticed was the bed. It's not cantilevered, so the rods here that run it up and down aren't at the back here with the bed hanging out in the air, you know, waving or something to, you know, sort of throw that accuracy off a little bit. It's, it's from side to side, and there are four rods, and two Z rods running the bed up and down, which I think makes it a lot more uh, the stable machine besides the carbon fiber, which I, you know, was like, wow, okay, <laughs> geez. On the extruder, the carbon fiber rods are at the top here running the extruder, the hot end back and forth. It's like, wow. We have a dust cover on the top. They say to take that off if you're running PLA. So I was like, okay, fine. And of course, leave this door open if you're, again, if you're running PLA because you want a little bit of drafting cool air going through while the machine's doing its thing. Uh, watching the machine uh, run was uh, kind of surprising. It's like, it is so fast. It's like, oh, it's like that, that's, that's sick, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it looks more like something industrial, you know, that you might see on a, one of those Discovery Channel programs or something. The filament, is fed from the back here and has, let's see if I can just turn this around for you a little bit. Uh, the filament is back here and it comes with this little rod that uh, you just put that in, put your filament on top, feed it underneath of course, run it up through. Let's see if we can get it back for a little bit. This is your filament run out sensor and that's fine, you know, it's good. I, I ran it through, I ran it through. I like to call this the Bowden tube. It really isn't really a Bowden tube because it's not feeding from here and pushing. It's actually just a, more like just a, I'll call it a feed tube. And 
The problem that a lot of these machines have, and I'm just gonna set this up for you, and this one here doesn't seem to have it, so I'm just gonna show you what I'm talking about. This feed tube goes to a, like a 90 degree angle, which goes down into your, uh, into your extruder. And that 90 degree uh, turn right here, a lot of times gets really tight on filament on certain machines. Uh, and this one here was an unknown, because I haven't had this machine in before, haven't used it before, so it was like, well, you know, we'll, we'll find out. And it actually, it seems to be just fine. It doesn't seem to have any effects, it's not bothering anything. So it works great, you know. And again, we'll pop the door back open here. And so, overall, as a beginning machine, for a, for a beginner, this could be a very first machine, easy to set up, easy to run, and it's high speed. So you're not gonna be impatiently waiting for eight hours for something to come off of this. Well, depending on what you're making, of course. But the, the overall experience was just like, you know, I could see a beginner starting with a machine like this, and he'd be, you know, perfect with it. He's not, you know, shouldn't have any real problems with it. Now, as an intermediate machine, it should be, looked at because it's a high speed printer and providing you can deal with that bed size which most of us probably can for most modeling it's going to produce a great model at you know at a really high speed so you can get especially if you're prototyping um, if you're familiar with 3d printing and you're intermediate you've run stuff before you know yourself a lot of times you'll run something off quick take a quick look at it to see what changes you need to make in your drawing or your draft or your cam, you know, that sort of thing. So something like this can knock it out really quickly and you can have it in your hand. It might be a little bit uh, rougher than what you're used to from a regular 3D printer, but you, you know, eight, five to eight times faster than your other printers is like, you know, that's pretty nice to have. But also it's not noisy. It's it's moderate. Uh, there was a little bit of noise noticed when it's running, but really it wasn't that bad. In fact, we'll run it today while we're, while we're doing all this anyways. My thing was, this is like, as I started looking at between the price and how fast it is, it was like, this could be a game changer, but I'm expecting really uh, poor quality models to come off of here because it's so fast. And that's really where it kind of, you know, pivoted for me. And I run a 3D print farm, small one. So all of a sudden, having just one of these could replace up to five of my machines. That's crazy. Those five machines all cost in the neighborhood of what this costs. So it was like, you know, what? You know, yeah. Now, the, another one of the many questions we're going to have, and this one is Clipper. So Okay, so she runs on Clipper software, which... Kind of no surprise there because that's kind of like the high-speed printers software of, of uh, choice these days. But uh, they also have their own slicer. And their slicer is so much like Cura that you really wouldn't have a problem going between uh, using uh, Cura and using like their software uh, for slicing. It's like, it's, it's virtually the same. One of the greatest things I saw here was this little guy right here actually shows you uh, what you're printing. So it has a little picture of the model up here. Very intuitive, very nice, easy to use, large screen, you know, not like uh, the P1P, <clears throat> you know. So you have a really nice touch screen to work with and a, a picture of the actual model of what you're printing. And that may not sound like a big deal for some, but for me, it's sort of a bit of a game changer. But the big thing was, in my mind, in your mind, anybody, when you're printing this fast, can you still get quality models off of it? And the answer to that is, it looks like, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we printed something that's normally a production item, and I virtually think that you can't really see the difference between the ones that take eight hours to manufacture, and this one manufactured the same product, in one hour and about 18 minutes, which means, you know, wow, yeah. So we booted up, and you know, so one of the things we have right here, and they've got a little control thing for it right here, is the light, and you can turn the light on or off, depending on what you want, and it's nice to have the light inside, so you can see what's going on, I guess. The, they're all the emergency stop if something's going wrong. Clipper, based on Clipper software, and here's the machine with the home button. Now we're going to go to uh, we're going to go to prints, and this got a little confusing for me for a half a second because the SD card is filed, and there's your files there from your SD card, and so that got a little bit strange, but that's okay. And then there's the other prints that came already loaded, including the Benchy. Uh, I think we'll go ahead, and of course, as soon as you pull it up, look at this. It shows you the model of the Benchy that you're going to be uh, printing. 
I think that's terrific. It also uh, is set for PLA, uh, shows 17 minutes. Now there is a problem here that you're going to run into because I've got PLA loaded, but I don't have the PLA rapid or high speed loaded. I've got just standard PLA loaded. So if I go ahead, I also don't need bed leveling. But We've started the uh, benchy so that uh, I, I want you to hear the machine. I, you, you can hear it. it. Like I said, it does have some noise, but it's not noisy like some of them. It's, it's pretty, actually I'm going to say it's quieter than any of the other high speed printers that I've been around. There's a couple of things I need to mention uh, with this particular uh, model. This is standard cheap PLA. This is not high speed PLA, which they say you can buy. It was set for rapid PLA. So I really cheated the system uh, by what I did. I gotta thank geekbuying.com for sending this over to us. What a great bunch. They sent this over to us for a review, but also I wanna talk a little bit about their website. They will have this. I will provide a link below in the description where you can find this machine at their site, but they have, keep an eye out for flash sales. A flash sale will come up and sometimes it'll have four or five days of time on it. And that is really when you can really jump in and get a great deal on something like this. This is such a game changer for me. Uh, not so much because of what I showed you here. It did do, you know, it provided a pretty decent little benchy. There's a few flaws in it. Uh, not perfect, but it wasn't set for this PLA. So I'd say that's an, you know, pretty darn incredible job. If it was set for PLA, it probably would have done this in about 24 minutes or something like that. And it would have been, you know, probably pretty close to flawless. It did a terrific job. There's no stringing, no hair. Most of the whole boat pretty much comes out looking pretty decent. There's a few spots where the, the, um, the lines are a little heavy here. Uh, there's nothing really written on the back here much. There's a little flaw in the hull right about here where something didn't quite come off right. But beyond that, uh, wow, impressive for a benchy to come off in 17 minutes. The uh, overall view is it's a great intro price into high speed 3D printing, fully enclosed, which means in some ways that's better than the P1P. So I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it, in a lot of ways, it's kind of a better deal, better machine and for hundreds of dollars less you can get into this one. My other question will be down the road, we'll have to come back at it at some point and see how it wear and tear it goes with uh, it's like 3D print farming or something. A couple of these machines would replace everything I have right now that I use and it would be able to provide me with the products I need quickly. And that's really what this comes down to for myself. But even if you're an advanced printer, something that can print that fast is amazing and in the software you can adjust it so that it, it will run the PLA or the PLA plus or uh, rapid or high speed PLA so that's something that we got to talk about uh, and comment in the description below I've been looking at the PLA uh, rapid print and I really I don't understand why there's a difference but apparently there is so let me know what you think about rapid you know, are we spending more money to get rapid PLA now or something for these machines? You know, what, what's going on with that? But overall experience, this thing is just so shockingly fast and it just, it just changes everything about my business that I'm really kind of like looking at what do I do to uh, my pricing structure, everything was all based on the old machines, not this. Now I glossed over a lot of detail today because I want to come back to this about the software and some of the other things about with the features of loading, unloading, and what have you. But I just wanted to introduce you and myself to this machine because it was like, it, it is a lot, it's a lot of things I did not expect from this company. So I was really impressed with everything. And I mean, the very first thing of course is who's it for? Well, it's for a beginner, intermediate, advanced, or printing farm. I think this machine can fit the bill on all of the above. Down the road, the machine, may have some wear spots, you know, it might run into a problem. And if a machine like this goes down, because it's a high speed rapid printer, 
it means a huge production time loss if you don't have this. So I would say more than one would be a good idea or at least keep one of your old printers around just in case something ever goes wrong with this one. Uh, meantime, it is a great printer, but I do want to get back to software. Uh, maybe Thursday or something we'll visit and do the slicer software and you know setting up a print and that sort of thing and see how things come up. Also want to test uh, rapid speed PLA against just some basic generic cheap PLA, but uh, there's no fair way to do that because in the slicer settings for this machine, you can tell the machine what you are running. Now they do include this, it's black, I think it's black, yeah, black, and it's, uh, this is high speed PLA, they say, for rapid printing. It's, it's uh, from uh, QD Tech, so you may want to take a look at their supplies and get directly from them some uh, spools of you know the QD Tech high-speed printing material just to uh, see if there is a difference. That's I guess that's my question, you know, uh, because you saw the little Benji. There was some flaws, but it was kind of expected because it is just basic PLA. And the question really comes down to you know is there a difference if I run a, a rapid high-speed PLA? Does that make a difference in like the 17-minute Benji? Uh, we tested uh, one of my products on this machine versus one of my regular printers. Uh, it was at least five times as fast at that point with my fastest machine. And so this beat it, you know, that wow, you know. And the two uh, products were pretty much identical, which tells me that's great because I can turn that product loose and I sort of have five times the profit or something, right? So. Uh, the machine sort of fits a lot of bills. I'm going to come back uh, probably Thursday or something and we'll do the software end of this thing and try to pick up any of the details that we kind of glossed over today. Uh, there's just so much you know going on here that uh, was a shock when it came in the door because it was like I did, really didn't expect to be that impressed tell you the truth. I was kind of looking at it thinking yeah it'll be fast but uh, will the models be any good? As it turns out the models came off like, yeah, this could have been eight hours and it had the same model. You know, poof, wow. So big differences. Gotta, gotta say that. And, and we're gonna get out of here for today. But thank you for tuning in to Coffee and Tools. And please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell, check in on us, and keep checking back for flash sale deals on this thing. And I'm out of here. Uh, over and out.